We all know that the integral of 1 over x dx equals the natural log of the absolute value of x. We often prove it the other way around. We start with the natural log of x, we differentiate it, and we get 1 over x. But what if I told you that there's another way to prove it, starting from the integral itself? And we're going to do it using a simple substitution. But we have to consider two separate cases. Uh, the first one is when x is greater than 0. When x is greater than 0, we can take this simple substitution here, x equals e to the t. x has to be positive because e to the t is always greater than 0, no matter what value of t we choose. Uh, so let's differentiate both sides. So dx equals to e to the t dt. We can substitute this back into our integral and we get 1 over e to the t because x equals e to the t times our dx. That is e to the t dt. We can simplify e to the t and e to the t and we get that this is the integral of 1 in integrated uh, dt. And this interval here is just t plus c. But now what is t? Well, we know that x equals e to the t, so we can just take the natural log on both sides and we get that t equals the natural log of x. So this is the natural log of x plus c. And this is when x is greater than 0. We know that this interval is the natural log of x plus c. Now we have to consider the case when x is less than 0, because this function is defined for x greater than 0, but also negative numbers, and obviously it is not defined for x equals 0. Okay, the whiteboard is ready, and we can just go ahead and find what this integral is for x smaller than 0. And we're going to do the following substitution, x equals minus e to the t. Remember that now x is less than 0, so this number here is positive, we have a minus sign, and it all works perfectly. We can take uh, the derivatives on both sides, as we did earlier, and this is minus e to the t times dt. Uh, we can substitute this back into our integral. This is the integral of 1 over minus e to the t times minus e to the t dt. We can simplify this and this, and we get back to the integral of 1 dt, which equals t plus c. But now, what is t? Well, we can take a look at this equation here. We can just multiply both sides by minus 1 we get minus x equals e to the t. Just apply the natural log on both sides, and we have that t equals the natural log of minus x. Now, it might seem weird, the natural log of, of minus x, but remember that x is negative, so negative ni times negative is positive. So we're perfectly allowed to do this, because this number here, the argument of the natural log function, is positive. All right, so this is the natural log of minus x plus c. Now, remember what we got earlier. When x is greater than 0, this integral equals the natural log of x, obviously plus c. And when x is less than 0, we have the natural log of minus x. But x is negative, so this is always positive. In other words, the general case will be that the integral of 1 over x dx, it doesn't matter what the sign of x is, is going to be equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x, and obviously plus c.